Forcing air through a pile of manure using a leaf blower, just like this, will it help break it down faster with less smells, less flies? Let the experiment begin. If we wanted to break down manure, we could do what I did on this bed right here. We could pile it up and let it sit. But if it's not aerated properly, it could take a very long time and it could smell. So could we speed up that process and eliminate the smells by aerating it, not using our bodies, but a piece of tech? That's just what I did in these two barrels. Four months ago, I filled each one with manure. This one was aerated using a leaf blower. This one was aerated passively using that central pipe. In terms of running the leaf blower, I ran the leaf blower 15 minutes a day, three times a day, seven days a week. Outside of that, each pile was watered a few times a week depending on the weather. The overall result for both barrels was positive but also a little disappointing because there's really no discernible difference in the finished product between actively aerated and passively aerated barrel. They basically came out the same. I've dug through the barrels and you cannot visually tell a difference looking at the two finished products. The finished product looks something like this. It's almost got this clay-like structure to it. So as you can see, the results look good. The finished product looks really good, but it's missing, I think, one thing. It's missing that macrobiology that you would have in a pile if that pile had made solid ground to pile contact. These barrels are elevated off the ground. So whatever is inside this barrel either got there by floating through the air, I put it into the pile, or it was imported in when the manure came in. So fungi, bacteria, that's in there, but there's not that macrobiology. I didn't add worms or anything to this. I wanted to try and keep it strict in terms of how well could forced air work with passive air. So the leaf blower, what do I like about it? What don't I like about it? Well, the one thing I like about it is it comes on every day and I know it's aerating the pile. The things I don't like about it are it's loud, it uses electricity, and it kind of ruins that garden vibe that a lot of us are going for. A lot of times I'd be out here in the middle of the day, it'd go off around noon, and you'd just hear this blower for 15 minutes. It just, it kills the vibe a little bit. And if it's not ultimately solving a problem or being a huge positive, well, I don't want my vibe chilled like that. Given that it's missing that macrobiology, does it mean this compost is worse? No, I'm not gonna say that. I kind of feel like that macrobiology should be in there, but I don't have any data or anything to suggest that it has to be in there. This could be absolutely great compost for all I know, and for what I can see, it looks really good. Given some of the negatives around noise, electricity, and the lack of macrobiology in the pile, wouldn't I just be better just composting it the traditional way? Possibly. Well, I love the layering method for manure, you know, just layering it right on a bed and letting it sit and walk away and eventually plant into it. It's a great method. I think this method does have some benefits, but I'm not sure the benefits are something that's going to benefit me in my situation. What do I mean by that? Aerating compost using forest air, this is a proven system. It's done on a commercial level all the time. There's more compost being made using forest air than there is using these passive systems because that's the way a lot of commercial compost producers do it. So the system definitely works. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just saying for me, it doesn't really add a benefit to my system, the materials that I have to work with. So where might it be a benefit to me and for some of you? I think if you had a lot of heavy, dense, wet organic matter that you wanted to make a compost pile out of, then forced air would really help. If you had a lot of really fresh, really wet, really heavy manure, this would help. Maybe swine manures in that category, maybe fresh cow manures in that category. If you had a lot of grass clippings, if you were able to grind up a lot of your corn stalks into like a silage type material, that's gonna be wet and dense, it's gonna wanna pack together. Forced air might help that pile from going anaerobic because it wants to settle. The small particles wanna bind close, removing all the voids in the pile. So forcing that air into the pile might help a lot of problems come from that pile. But if I look at a lot of what I'm breaking down, wood chips, this more aged manure, 
I don't think it really helped. I don't think I had an aeration problem to begin with. I don't think wood chip piles are necessarily going to go anaerobic unless they're huge in my experience. And I don't think this manure was going to go anaerobic either unless it just got absolutely waterlogged, which it wouldn't in a barrel system like this. One other key takeaway from this experiment is the power of doing nothing at all. When I filled this barrel, I put the pipe in and I did nothing else except water it. It got air by itself. It got what it needed on its own. I didn't do anything to it. And that's the problem I think a lot of us make as humans and as gardeners. We always think that we have to provide the solution. We have to provide that quote missing link in the garden to get it to work better. Put some more trust in nature and realize that sometimes you're going to get better results or the best results by just creating a system that has the chance to do what it was naturally evolved over millions and millions of years to do. I still love this method of composting. Again, I think it works, but it's got to work in the right situation. For me, in my situation, it hasn't really helped with wood chips, it hasn't really helped with manure, so it's probably not something I'm going to try again unless I have the materials that deem it to be necessary. Remember, arrive at the solution, don't impose the solution. This is the great thing about doing a lot of experiments. Sometimes you get a alternative positive result. You learn what to do or what not to do. So don't be afraid to go out there, try new things, knowing that they might not work or they might work, but just not in the way that you expected. I appreciate you watching this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.